again, people. Welcome back to another new episode of The Scenes, and thank you for tuning in again. So lately, I've been doing the color grading tutorials for beginners, like in the easy way. But today, I think I'm gonna level up a little bit. Today's technique is so useful when you color grade a music video and fashion brand or other vintage theme video, which personally, I love. So today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make a vintage film look in DaVinci Resolve. As always, let's breathe a new life into the footage. Enjoy. Okay, so this time, I'm gonna use this footage. As you can see the parade and the image, there isn't that much of contrast and colors going on. It's pretty much flat and those parade are low. So I'm not going to be against to the original footage. More than that, I'm going to use those features for creating a vintage film look. Okay, first, massage the contrast with this slider. Just making this image more contrasty but not too much. So I'm going to bring this up. This time, I will stop right here. You know, not too contrasty, but not too flat, but a little bit faded kind of feel, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna stop right here. And by using this pivot, I'm gonna reduce the, a little harshness from this image. So I'm just gonna bring it up and I'm gonna make it more flat. Just like this. So I wanna make it look you know, creamy and soft. So I'm gonna bring this gamma a lot. See, if you bring the gamma features around middle area, the image will be brighter, but with less harshness. On the other hand, if you bring up the gain features around the upper area on the parade here, it will be more brighter, but the image will get, you know, the harshness in it. So be careful about the amount of this gain, but I'm getting a little bit more, just like this. So the lift, it allows you to control the lower area and parade around here. I'm gonna bring this down, but not too much because I don't wanna make it too contrasty this time. So just a little bit, you know, as the little spice. This should be okay. But still, I want to reduce the you know, a little flatness from the shadow, but don't want to like crush it hard. I need more like a detailed adjustment. So I'm going to use log shadow, which allows you to control more detailed shadow area. So I'm going to bring this down. Good. So this is before, after, before, after. Okay, I think it's pretty good. It has a basic contrast, but it's not super crispy or, you know, too flat. Just, you know, well balanced right now. So next, moving to saturation. Well, beginners might make a mistake right here. You know, right after making contrast, they tend to jump into like a create a look, like a doing like crazy stuffs or like a log wheels but i recommend you to make it back to normal color by watching this parade first and later based on that color you can create your favorite look of course you should separate nodes for each because that way you can turn it on and off and check if you're at the right place or not so first right now the temperature is too much like i mean it's too yellow and as you can see this parade this red is so powerful so I think I'm going to reduce it by moving this temperature slider to cold blue side. So all the way to blue side. See, it's already good. Like before, after, before and after. It's much better. It's good enough to see what's going on in colors. So I want a little bit more saturation for it. So this saturation slider, I'm going to push it up, but not too hard because I don't want to make it too colorful this time. So again, watching this parade, you see the red is going on too much compared to green and blue, especially this upper area. Now back to this image, still the red is kind of too much. So I want to reduce it from like a total image. So I'm going to shift this gain toward blue side. So this is before, after, before. 
after. Before it's less color and too much of yellow, but after it has colors enough and the position of each is just right. So one more thing before we jump into look, this yellow sweater is kind of too much for me. Like it's it's kind of strong for me. So I want to reduce saturation of this. So using the hue versus saturation, I will grab this yellow and bring it down. I see if I go down, it loses the, you know, saturation. So I think this part is good. So before, after, before, after. So from now, we are creating the vintage film look. But also, I want to care about her skin tone because it has huge portion in this image. So first, I will make the window mask on her face. I will cover her face by this mask and also this arm just like this and add some blur and next I will track it by using this DaVinci Resolve amazing tracking tool just hit the play and it will track it automatically and it's so accurate fast very good I love it and I will pull her skin tone with this qualifier if this qualifier and skin tone thing is kind of difficult to understand and do, please leave the comment below. I might make the episode about it. But anyway, I'm going to select her skin tone. And I'm going to add denoise. And also blur. Yeah, good. So now her skin was pulled out from this image. So no matter what I do on this look node, nothing will affect on her skin. Okay, let me stop for a while to introduce today's sponsor, ArtGrid. So ArtGrid is the royalty-free footage platform for filmmakers from all over the world. You can get high quality graded footage and also log a raw file. Of course, the footage I'm going to use today is from ArtGrid. If you want to boost your filmmaking creativity, just hit the link below. Now with my link, you can get two extra free months. So now moving to the look. So this time, important thing for creating the vintage film look is the color on shadow. In my opinion, when you put the blue on the shadow, the image will be like a modern look, which I did last time, like teal and orange. But when you put orange, red, yellow, on shadow, the image will be kind of retro and vintage look, just like this. See those shadow area got some yellow feel. Also, let's shift this mid tone to, again, orange side. Okay, I'm gonna stop right here. But I'm gonna shift this highlight to blue side to maintain this white sheet, still clean white. So I'm gonna do before and after, before, after, before, and after. Good, I love the vibes here. By using yellow and orange wisely, the image can have the retro vintage vibes. Calm and chilling feel is right here. So now let's go back to the skin node and fix it a little bit. It's not that bad as is, but I want more like white on her face. So first, simply I'm gonna make her face more brighter by using this curve. So I'm just gonna push it up. Yeah, maybe like this. And next, moving to hue versus hue. Here I will fix the color of her skin. But first, let me introduce the DaVinci Resolve Brilliant tool, which is this vector scope. Frankly, this shows you what colors are where. There are R for red, M for magenta, B for blue, and C for cyan, and goes on. So this yellow is, of course, this yellow sweater. But what we want to focus on is this line. If you don't have this, just hit this and check the show skin tone indicator. So this indicates the human natural skin tone. Well, it depends on the race, but pretty much this line works for the, you know, getting the natural skin tone. You know, it's like a guide. So you see this thing, this one, so this represent her skin tone. Now it's a little bit left from this line, which says her skin is a little bit yellow. So I'm going to move this toward the line a little bit more. So I'm going to make points like this. 
So I'm gonna grab this point on red and gently, slowly, I'm gonna push it up, watching the you know both of face and this scope. See, as I move this point, the both of the face and scope are changing. If I go like this crazy, see? This thing is moving to magenta, and if I go like a yellow side, this thing will move to yellow, green, and cyan. This is how it works. So I'm going to close to this line, but not placing it on perfectly on this line because this image has yellow vibes so the face is expected to be a yellow a little bit so i'm gonna stop right here and also i'm gonna push this yellow a little bit up just like this i think it works i'm also going to hue versus saturation and make point like this and i'm gonna bring red down and yellow down a little bit because i want to make it a little bit less saturated also using this tool node key and in that qualifier this gain i'm gonna lower this to blend what we did with you know the total image if i go down like this it completely loses you know what i did on her skin but now it's kind of obvious so i want to you know blend those together just gonna bring it down a little bit like this and at the last i'm going to bring this mid-tone detail to make her face more creamier so before after before and after just perfect So next, I'm gonna make a simple vignette. So using this pen tool, and I'm gonna create the window. See, like this. And invert it, and going to curve, and bring it down. And going back to this window tool, and make those edges more softer, blending. Next, it's pretty much the same thing as vignette, but again, make the mask by using this pen tool. Just same as the vignette, just like this. And done, invert it, and it's going to curve again, and bring it up. I will stop right here. Go back to window tool, and make it softer, like this. And also bring this mitten detail down to make it more creamier. So I'm gonna select those two and before, after, before, and after. Huge difference. So you can stop right here. Today's color grading is pretty much done. But if you have studio version, there are two more things that we can do for making this vintage film look more vintage film look. So if you wanna learn more, stick with me a little bit more. So I'm gonna use this effect which is glow and apply this on this node. So this thing is genius. It can make highlight more softer and creamier in a kind of glow effect. I thought this effect is just perfect for this time. Like this theme, vintage retro look. So change the threshold to zero all the way up and also composition type to soft light and open the global blend and finding the good spot i guess i'm gonna stop right here 0.486 so this is before after before after i just love this glow effect you know, it's so easy step, but you can get this result. You know, it's just not making softer. Not only that, you know, it's, you know, making this image more shiny and like, gorgeous. If you have studio version, please try this effect. And at the last, I'm going to add the film grain on the last node. So you can choose your favorite one from those presets or you can adjust you know, texture, grain size, and softness to create your favorite grain. So I will make my grain. So let me do this quickly. Look at 
just like this. So this is before. It's just normal vintage film look, but it's good. And after, you see those small like grains, like noises. You know, it's giving this image additional like extra like a vintage film look. Well, absolutely, this is optional. But this time, I thought this film grain could, you know, emphasize the vintage film look. Okay, this is it. I'm gonna turn off all of this and let me take to the journey of all processes we did to get this look from this flat log image. Enjoy. That was long tutorial. How many of you guys survived? If you are still watching this video, just thank you. I'll send you the you know, big respect. But anyway, if you do step by step, I believe you can achieve this vintage film look. Important thing is have the concept, theme, and stick on that. Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this color grading, don't hesitate to leave the comment below. And if you have any requests for next scenes, also leave the comment below. So today's topic is pretty much it, and thank you for watching this video. If you like this one, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.